Yo, what's going on, Titan Clan? It is your boy King Dynex here, back with another video. And you guys already know the deal. Uh, this is going to be what if Issei was Bond's reincarnation. Now, this is going to be a kind of interesting one, considering that I haven't necessarily finished all of well some deadly sins, but I am going to actually be binge watching it. In like the next couple of days or so like after this video is released so I can get a uh, better understanding for what I'm talking about but um, for now I'll be using some of the information I find off of the wikis and from well well Neptune's knowledge of the series as well so well wish me luck Bond's life had been a pretty wild ride, you could say. Uh, yeah, he went from being a typical bandit to all of a sudden becoming this immortal being to, well, being led by a demon prince or a demon king or whatever into, well, surviving purgatory for what felt like a millennia. He honestly kind of had to laugh at that, all of the things that he had to go through, but he didn't regret anything whatsoever. That was what led to his development throughout the years. That's what caused him to become the bond that he was today. He managed to eventually settle down, meet the love of his life in the process of all of these wild things that happened in his life brought his beloved back to life as well and he even had a son with her that he managed to see grow up to become a splendid young man well maybe that was taking it a bit too far saying splendid wasn't necessarily in Bond's nature well I guess you could say that Lancelot was well a fine young man by Bond standards. <laughs> yeah, he also lost his immortality. Well, as he's mentioned before, as mentioned before, he ended up using his immortality during his time under the leadership of Meliodas to bring back his beloved, his true love, you could say, his soulmate. But as stated before, it was well worth it considering he was able to revive Elaine. He honestly had no regrets about this life whatsoever. He had lived a very long life but it seemed as if time had finally begun to catch up on to him now. Well, especially now that he was no longer immortal. He aged like any, any other person moving forward. And if he could relive all of it, he would surely do. He would surely do it. He did not want to change his life whatsoever. Bond would be. Bond would be willing to relive all of this, and he wouldn't change anything if it meant that he would manage to stay in this same situation. If it meant that at the end of the day, he still. Managed to meet Elaine, meet Meliodas, all of these characters that he basically kind of grew up with, and grew in character, decision making, all of these sorts. He would not regret reliving all of it. A bright light would begin to en envelop him or, well, obscure his vision. Was this what death felt like? It felt kind of refreshing actually to know what it felt like to die rather than to simply regenerate each time. He never expected for this death of his to feel so peaceful. Many people talked about fearing death, but with everything Bond had been through, well, 
this was relaxing even with this bright light beginning to obscure his vision it seemed rather beautiful in a sense it was like the northern lights you could say or like it was basically like the stars in the sky basically lighting up lighting up the whole world at this point lighting up all of Bond's world and it was a magnificent sight to see he would try and reach out for the light as well but all of a sudden he would practically disappear his hand would begin to disappear it was as if his body was being disintegrated from finger to finger, from nail to nail, all of these parts, uh, every single atom of his body was being disintegrated, but it didn't feel painful. It felt calming. And then the light vanished. Bond would be confused, especially when realizing that he now had the hand of a chubby person, you could say. All of a sudden, his hand look, looked completely different. He would take a look at both of his hands, actually, and they looked rather fat and stubby. He looked around his surroundings and noticed something off about his new environment. It looked futuristic in a sense. It wasn't anything like the stone walls that he was used to. He heard the voices of some people talking about somebody named Issei. He didn't really know who that was. The adults would approach Bond with smiles on their faces and he would be even more confused now. Why were these people so tall? Or so big actually why was this room so big <laughs> as well not now that he was really taking a look at it Bond was used to the rooms actually being quite small for him you see he was a fairly tall person back in his world or at least when he presumed to be his world he, he actually wasn't even quite sure if this was a whole new world or anything. He wasn't really sure of what was going on. But from his time in a mortal realm, he was a pretty tall person. It was one of his many defining features. He usually stood out in the crowd because of his height and his choice of attire, but mainly his height. But now it seemed like the situation had been com completely flipped on its head for him. He took a look at his hands again, realizing just how small and stubby they really were. He began putting two and two together, but no, no way. He, he quickly denied it. He, he didn't want to believe such a possibility. Sure, he knew that it existed, but he and then want to believe that it would have ever happened to him of all people. Unfortunately, his theory would be proven to be correct when the female giant actually picked him up and carried him upstairs, calling him Issei. Along the way, he would have passed by a mirror and sure enough, Bon had the appearance of a baby but this time he had brown hair and green eyes. This this was going to take some time to get used to. Over the years, Bond would get adjusted to this new name of his, Issei. He would also settle into this being his new reality. As Issei, he found he grew rapidly throughout the year. The year. <laughs> the years. He was already a six footer in middle school after all. He was rather athletic and his height made him an easy scout for many coaches at the schools growing up. He was considered rather lanky by most of the student populace but that wasn't necessarily the case. You see, he was just lean and wore clothes that were very out of fashion. 
so it was hard to notice his muscular physique most of the time. As Issei, he wouldn't slack in his training though. He remembered his days as Bon and how he was being led by Meliodas, how he had to fight all sorts of magical, magical creatures with, well, Cappy. He could practically smell them in this world as well now. Interesting. He still had more foes to face in this world. He could tell. Although, they seemed to be a bit dampened, you could say. He, he wasn't quite sure what the whole entire case was when it came on to these magical creatures. He hadn't encountered any just yet, but he could already tell that he was going to probably have to fight some of these eventually. But as you say, he would continue to just learn more about the world. He would invest a good amount of his time shadow boxing and fighting in general to keep his combat skills sharp whenever he wasn't in school or playing a sport of course. <laughs> He'd even make training part of his morning routine as well just to, well, stretch his muscles. He could also tell that there was something off about this, well, body of his but he couldn't exactly pinpoint what exactly was off about it. And eventually, Issei would be recruited to join a certain school. This school's name was Kuo Academy. At first, he would be confused though. Not necessarily, well, not necessarily about the recruitment part since he, well, knew all too well that they wanted his physical prowess on the field. Tons of high schools and college colleges wanted this from Issei. Rather, <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually the school itself that was trying to connect with him that he was confused about. Since he understood that this certain school, Cool Academy, was an all girls academy or an all girls school. So, why were they trying to recruit a boy, Issei of all people? When he got to the bottom of it tall, <laughs> Issei would actually find out that they planned on opening up the school to the male gender as well for next year and they wanted Issei to be one of the first boys to officially join. With all of the offers the academy provided, or I should say benefits, it seemed like too good of a deal for Issei to just pass up or like pass on. He wasn't about to just give up this opportunity of a lifetime. He could practically live in lux luxury at this at this academy and just continued to play the way he's always been playing. Another thing that Yusei also had to consider was the fact that he could probably meet a bunch of cute girls there too. Issei would accept and he would be admitted to Kuo Academy for the next year. He would continue to dominate in the sports for the very first year making him a rather popular student. He smelled something off about this school though. There were magical beings in this school and not just wizards and witches like Merlin either. <laughs> you see, they smelled kinda like his old captain but far less potent. Weird. When he got to the bottom of it all, he would actually end up meeting a couple of people. One was a girl with crimson red hair and jade green eyes who went by the name Rhea Scremory. Another girl had long black hair and her name was Akino... Um, yeah, just, just, just Hawken. Uh, Akino. <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna try and butcher that last name. Uh, a third one who wore glasses was actually named Sona Citri. The first two girls were part of the occult research club, but Issei could tell right away that <laughs> this club was actually a cover up for something else. They also smelled like demons. So same for the Century girl as well, actually. But 
when it came on to Sid, when it came on to Sid Tree, <laughs> or like Sona Sid Tree, there was another thing about her. She was actually the student body president for this school. Issei was thinking about approaching them one day, but he would decide to leave them be and just observe how they moved. And for the most part, they didn't seem to cause any trouble, so Issei, he would decide to not necessarily get involved in most of their affairs as a result. It wasn't really his business. They seemed to be a different type of demons from what he was used to. Weaker, but more docile as a result. Or at least he assumed that was the whole reason why they were so much more calmer. By the time he reached the second year in Kuo, Ac Kuo Academy, Issei had basically become a star athlete or a student celebrity at this point. He was found competing against schools from all across the globe at this point as well. He rarely lost with his above average strength and speed. Sometimes he would even be checked to see if he was using any performance enhancers per the, per the request of enemy teams, but as expected, he would always be found to be clean, which would infuriate some of the enemy teams who would then lose right after. They rarely ever held a candle to Issei. The only times that they ever held a candle was when he was kinda off his game. Whether it was just because he was sick or just because his teammates were just that bad that day. But Issei wouldn't let any of this bother him though. This was nothing more than just a minor annoyance for him at this point in his life. There was something else Issei had to deal with though and that was the attention of girls, <laughs> specifically this one girl, Yuma, who claimed to be a recent transfer student who needed help finding her classes. Issei's hyper aware smell detected something off about this girl though. She smelled like a mix between the goddess and demon tribe, albeit watered down by a heavy amount. This was kind of bugging him. It kind of she kind of reminded him of like Meliodas' son, Tristan, I believe his name was. If it turns out I got his name wrong, please correct me in the comment in the comments. But she seemed a sort of similar to to Meliodas and Elizabeth's son, but far less potent. This was weird. When he was actually done giving her a tour of the school and getting to know Yuma as well, she would actually go on to offer that the two of them go on a date together as a sign of gratitude. And Yuma wasn't particularly Issei's type, but he couldn't shake off this eerie feeling that he had for some reason. He needed to. He needed to figure this out. He needed to get an understanding of this girl. Just get a bit more of an understanding. Maybe when they were all alone, he could go on to ask her the deeper questions. Like, what exactly was she really? But he would just accept the date for now. Maybe she would give him the answers throughout the date. Who knows? <laughs> This was pretty much the only reason he ended up agreeing to a date in the first place though. Any other time he would he would have probably rejected her explaining that she wasn't necessarily his type. But just for this one time he was going to accept the arrangement. And yeah they genuinely had some fun on their date and Issei would not let up whatsoever when it came on to his observations of the girl. He would stay rather vigilant all throughout the date. He would be waiting for a good time to actually ask Yuma questions on her true nature. He had learned to read people ages ago after all, and he could tell when a person was holding up a friend or not. And throughout the date, <laughs> yeah, Issei could totally tell that Yuma was 100% holding up a friend. She was wearing a mask. 
throughout the whole entire date. And now that Issei was really thinking about it, she was even wearing that mask when she first introduced herself to Issei. But the two would walk through the park together at the end of the date. There Issei would try to poke Yuma's brain a little. Get to know the real her now that they were all alone. Right when he was about to open his mouth though, Yuma would ask him a question first. A question that caused him to imme immediately tighten up. Would you die for me? Right then and there, Issei would witness Yuma's true form, that being of a fallen angel who would shoot light spears at him which he easily dodged. He'd make a remark on her question though, mentioning how he found it kinda cute that someone with such slow and weak attacks would even try their hand at killing him. He fought far tougher opponents than her before which confused Rainier to an extent. At first she thought he was just mocking him mocking her. But now that she was really thinking about it, the way that he moved didn't really make that much sense. From all of the information Rainier managed to collect on Issei up until now, no one did it ever mention that he had any encounters with magical life forms or was even aware of a sacred gear either. So how? How was he able to basically outpace her? The, the more that she questioned it, the, the more the more that she became unaware of her environment and the next thing you know, Issei would be right in front of her face with a fist cocked back. And you guys probably already know the details at this point. Like this is basically the end of the video. You guys should know what to do. If you are my content, uh, maybe hit that subscribe button. And if you're my content, you've been watching me for a while, you, you may as well hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment and a like please. Also, if you know anybody who is also interested in this content, please share the video to them as well. And yeah, that's basically all I gotta say. Check the description because I have a link to my Discord and Neptune's Wattpad in there if you're interested in seeing some of her own content as well. But yeah, that's basically all I have to say. Time Climate is working. Time next time. Peace.